Hey everyone, it is day 62 of my study abroad adventure. I have not vlogged in like 10 days then. <laughs> Just kind of happens that way. I hope to pick up a little bit and be better because there's definitely thoughts going on in my head and then I forget them way too quickly. But as I said before, sometimes I feel like I have to do this thing first before I can do that thing and that thing. And I definitely feel like I should do my homework and things before I vlog. And I think sometimes I need to just let myself vlog and get this out, and then I can do my homework. <laughs> we'll see. But I'm going to catch you up. So last time I vlogged, it was Saturday afternoon. Uh, not this last Saturday, but the Saturday before. <laughs> and I have to say, that night I didn't do anything. I purposely stayed in and watched Hulu and had a relaxing day. Sunday, we went to church, and after church they had lunch for us. Well lunch for the refugee program that the church sponsors and we as church members, church attendees could attend and that was really fun. I had a great conversation with an elderly lady from England about politics and education and things and it was really cool and really nice of her. I guess she's went somewhere for the next 10 days so maybe I'll see her this next Sunday but I haven't seen her since. And really good conversation, really good food. I was as I was going to church, I'm like, what am I going to do for lunch? And like, contemplating, and then this happened, and it worked out great. Afterwards, diddle-daddled, and met up with Daniel to work on our internship at the middle school. And came back and worked on the icebreaker for that. So, Daniel's my partner in this internship at the middle school that's not far from where I live. Really very convenient for me. And what we've decided to do was we've decided to do Mastermind, which is a code breaking game where there's six colors, sometimes when you play it online there's eight colors, and when you play it online the computer generates a code, or in person you generate a code, and then the other person uses those colors to try to figure out what color, what your code is. And there's, every time you make a guess, of four, because the code is four, I want to say digits because you can also play those as numbers if you want, but colors are less intimidating, so you play with colors. So there's a, you make a guess of four, and if I made the code, I will tell you, yes, you have the right color, right place, or yes, you have the right color, wrong place, by with two different colored pegs, is how the game works. And so we've decided this because it is a solved game, meaning you can find a method to always win. So you get 10 guesses, and if you don't guess the code within those 10, you lose and the computer wins, or the code maker wins. So we decided to do that because there's a lot of mathematical talk and a lot of mathematical probability, and, or not probably, problem solving and thinking to get till you get there. And so, and then we were going to do an icebreaker, get to know them. Um, and that's what I planned, because he had done this mastermind idea before with higher level students, uh, high school age, not middle school. We have 7th graders. So when we got there on Monday, we had three boys. We are expecting to have five, and I think they're all boys. And the language barrier was a bigger problem than we anticipated. We were told, like, it wouldn't be good, but, like, I kind of got the impression we'd be able to do something. But no, we got really lucky there's a boy who, he's doing it because he wants to talk in English, not because he likes math, while the other two like math. So slowly but surely we got them to get to understand the game with him helping translate as well as we us showing it. We had trouble explaining though, so the way the board's set up is it looks like the answer dot could correlate with the guess dot, which as we did the next week, we just decided to say harder version is that it doesn't correlate. Like I could put this wherever I want in the answers key, it just means this. So we got really close to figuring out the game last week, and it's only 45 minutes a week. This is part of the struggle. But it went really, really well. Like I said, the language barrier was a bigger issue, but we were pretty happy and talkative after that. Like it was rejuvenating. It's definitely hard trying to figure out what we were supposed to do, because we were just told to be there, and we're like, we don't know where we're going or what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, but then, so since it's been a week, we did this again yesterday, and our plan was to just pick up from last time and hopefully continue, because this is a really complicated thing that we could increase the code to 6 and can increase the code to 8 or 12 and colors. And so there's enough there to, if someone gets it fast, we can 
move on to other things as well. And we got there, and so this time we know where we were going and stuff, but this time we had seven kids. And we're like, we thought we only had five. So we had five males and two girls, and I think the two girls are not supposed to be there because they really did not know any English. And that was a struggle because, like, they didn't want to listen. They didn't want to do what we asked them to do. They wanted to just play the game. And the thing is, is this game isn't just getting lucky, making random guesses. Like, you're really supposed to think about what you're doing. And I will met Daniel's doing a great job, and I'm just kind of like, um, I don't know. Because he'll stop them, and he'll try. And um, we finally did. So we finally got, we saw one group started was doing to do a method that would be a solving method that we got really excited about, and so he decided to pair them, put the two groups together, because we had the kids, the three boys, explain to the other kids how to play, and let them play twice, just to see, and then we made it tougher, and they tried it, and like, the one group was starting to get it, but the two girls, I just don't think they were trying, they didn't want to try, so he would slow them down, and like, he made them look at one of the problems and say, like, was this a good guess, like, was this really a good guess? And so then when we finally started playing the last game that went over in time, they really thought about each question. The problem is they talked to each other in Hungarian. So we have no idea if they're on the right course, but we definitely could tell they were talking, they were thinking, they were deliberating, and it was good. It was very, very good. So we're going to do it again next week, third week in a row, and hopefully we can finally get to them having a solution. Is that hope? I emailed my advisor person to be like, what should I do if we have 200 people that weren't originally signed up? Because I'm like, shouldn't they be somewhere else? Like, is this okay that they're here and they're not supposed to be? So, we'll see. Um, I'll have to do that. It's exciting to do it. I'm excited for the experience. It just, it makes me respect Hispanic students in America a great deal. Really, really do. Which I always knew, realized the trouble, but then to try to teach someone, and it's so tough. So I have real respect for Hispanic students, and anyone whose English is not their first language or their first time in American schools, like, that's, that's real impressive stuff. They're, they're winners in America, and we should be excited that they have come to our country, and the fact that they try, it's really good. So, never talk down on them. So, anyway, so then back to last week. On Tuesday, I had regular classes. Palm solving, Poisson method. Nothing too exciting. Uh, salsa class, we finally learned how to switch partners, but not very well. So, I'll probably have to pick that up again tonight. Got, right then, at the end, it got kind of fast. And it's like, ah, oh, I don't know what's going on anymore. So, hopefully... I'm feeling a little sore, so hopefully tonight's fun again. Because today's Tuesday, so I just also lost again. Then, Wednesday, we went to the top mathematics school in Hungary, which was really, really cool. This is where my palm solving teacher teaches at. So we observed his class of 7th graders, and before him we viewed a class of 8th graders, and that was a regular class. And his 7th graders were advanced, and they were talking about geometry like that for him that lesson was just a refresher to see because so the school is kindergarten through 12th grade but the intensive math program starts at seventh grade so a lot of people from around the city as well as outside the city applies and stuff to get into the school so seventh grade you get kind of a new environment of students which just blows my mind that people all over will try to go to this school because it's the top mathematics school so he wanted to make sure and see how much they knew so it very much was just them discussing and playing things on the board and so we were able to follow along pretty well and Fushi would translate but it just amazed me that these were seven good and they're pretty much talking about the same things we would talk in a geometry class and I did geometry sophomore year because we did it weird but like I don't know even if you're the advance of the bands where you take algebra one seventh grade year, you still won't be taking geometry till eighth grade year. And they're talking about this stuff in seventh grade. So that was really cool. And talking after the lessons we talked with the person who's in charge of the math program. He is the host dad to two of our girls. So that's really cool. He I had met him at the Scottish dance thing too. So that was really, really cool. And he gave us like a quick Hungarian history lesson, which was nice to have someone just 
lay it out and talked a lot about how they have Hungarian culture, how the Hungarian culture is richly mathematic and why and how that is. And it's, it was really cool and really exciting. And I loved he, you know, he really laid out there that Hungary is really good in math and like they're proud of it and they're going to continue to do that because it's such in their culture to be that way. They compete nationally, internationally, globally, like they do it all and they do amazing trips and he has really good smart kids that are like the top of the top. And it just made me laugh because like the very first or the second time when we talk, got to talk with the kids and they're like, why did you come to Hungary? It's like, this is why, and you have a Hungarian here who gets it, why we came. And like, because he even like implemented that. You guys know this, this is why you came here. And it's like, yeah, that's why we came. So that was really good. Maybe sometime we'll read my notes from that. Anyway, I came back and uh, Ian came back to school. Ian taught the pigeonhole principle. I had the character, I was, I was supposed to bo both get the answers really quickly, but be really shy and embarrassed about it. And I nailed the shy and embarrassed part. That's That was easy, but I couldn't get the answers quickly. There's just no way. So, and I thought he did a great job with that. So, then that night I had math homework that took way longer than I expected it to. That, even though my parents watched this and they probably don't want to hear it, I pulled an all-nighter. So, I stayed up all night and went to class with no sleep. Which, only my first class was at a real struggle, but I, I have no idea what happened. I was literally just fighting to stay awake, and in the 15 minute gap, I took a 15 minute nap. And that surprisingly helped a lot. Um, and then after that, I got coffee. I think doing homework, I surprisingly did really well the rest of the day. And I think it's because the rest of my classes were much more engaging and less uh, lesser lecture base. So I did so I did all my classes, and then we posted me with MSHA about the Transylvania trip, and I did, and I'm definitely going. I paid a little bit yesterday, so I'm definitely going. And she was going to send us an email, because I was going to just come home and go to sleep and not get up till Friday. <laughs> but she wanted us to respond to her email quickly, and I gave it an hour and a half, and it's like, this is... So, I mean, I didn't go to bed till 7 o'clock at night, <laughs> which is early, except for the fact that all I've had since the day before was 15 minutes. <laughs> And granted, it made me feel a little lousy. It's the first time I pulled all nighter, and then I felt kind of lousy. Other than my body being tired and sore. So, Haley was gonna wake me up if the email was important, but I guess, but when I saw it in the morning, she's like, "Sorry, I didn't have it all done." So it irritated me that I even stayed up an hour and a half for it. But it did make me eat dinner and get some things done that I need to get done. So it's it's fine in the end. And I didn't wake up, or I didn't fully wake up and be cognitive until 10.20 the next morning, so I slept for like 15 hours. <laughs> Which was a little bit disappointing because I thought, oh, I'll go to bed super early and then I'll probably wake up before the sun comes up and I go see the sunrise or something. Nope. That didn't happen. So. Which is all fine. And then started my fun weekend that I had planned maybe twice as much as I ended up doing. <laughs> uh, Friday afternoon, we started with I didn't do anything until 4 o'clock, well, so I didn't do anything until I had to go get, print something off the campus, and then I met five other girls to do an escape room again. My second escape room, we escaped again with 15 minutes. I was a tiny bit more helpful. Not totally, but a tiny bit. And that was really fun and really cool and was exciting to do a ladies group, and so that was good. And we went for, some of us went for pizza, two of them had to go to a church thing. But then four of us went to pizza across the street, which was really good and fun. And then I came back and I had just spent time here because I bought a ticket for the Cascada concert. And at a club and bar. And I didn't realize how late she was coming on. So I got to hang out for a little while and then I head down there kind of late. Here is video of Cascada.
Sorry they're kind of short, but I kind of wanted to be in the moment and enjoy it a little bit. But there's something for you to see that I saw Cascade Alive, which never thought about doing it before, but I did it. It was cool. So, and then I was going to just go home afterwards, not stick around too long, even though the party kept going. But I, the line for the coats and stuff was really long, so I was like, I'm going to get a drink because I'm thirsty, and then I'll get in line. And as I was sitting there, two girls had come and sat near me, and one of them noticed that she had the same shoes as me. Not on her, but she had them. So they sparked up just a quick conversation. One spoke better English than another, but they were fine. We communicated fine. And they were so sweet. They invited me to dance, to party and dance with them to stay. And I was like, well, you know what? Might as well go with the opportunity given, even though it's kind of late. So I stick around and party and dance with them, which was so much fun to finally get to go dancing a little bit. And uh, they were crazy. They told me they were crazy. I didn't quite realize it, but they were crazy. But that was fun. <laughs> uh, and I had a really, really good time. And happy I did it. One of them, I shared my email with her because that was the only mode of communication we had as well as I had it on Facebook. So I made two Hungarian friends that night. And they haven't talked to me since because I don't know how sober they were Saturday night, Friday night to remember me. But it really helped me have a good time and I'm happy I did it. And so came back home, got to sleep for a couple of hours, which is then why didn't quite do as much because I stayed up way later on Friday night than I had planned. On Saturday, I didn't do anything until afternoon, and I went over to a friend that I had during the language course, Nathan's, that I had dinner with. That when I did the group of people at a guy's house for dinner, it, same guy, same place, to do he vlogs. Also, I may have talked about this before, and he started a series called What Is Normal where he's interviewing people from the program about just who they are. And it's really cool. I'm really excited for him. I was a third person on the show. I will put a link in the description when it comes out. It hopefully is coming out tonight, but it's up to him and his scheduling of things. So I will put a link down in the description that you can click on and then watch that interview that he did with me. And hopefully it's good. I think, I mean, I felt really good doing it, but then later I'm like, uh, how, like arrogant and self-absorbed did I come off or anything and I only said one stupid thing but he's editing it out so no one's ever gonna know. <laughs> I was I was trying to say I'm um, easy to get along with, easy to get along with but also hard, but I said I'm easy, easy to get along with and he, I didn't realize that at the moment but he's over there going oh my gosh I hope she follows this up with something and um, when we watched it a little bit back I was like Oh, I did not realize what was coming out of my mouth. <laughs> so, hopefully it's a good interview and you guys will enjoy it. Um, hopefully it's nothing that new if you're watching my vlogs, but he's really smart. So that was what was really cool. Was he kind of, I told him my interests and he'd kind of talked to me before. So, yeah, it was good. I hope you enjoy it. After that, I finally went to the Chimney Cake Festival, which was what I hoped to do before, so I didn't quite enjoy any of the performances and just enjoyed the festival a little bit. And I got to make my own chimney cake, and here's footage of that. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, 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 no, no. O
If you get small uh, oh. uh, we make we make another. Yeah. Okay. So that was really cool and like it's kind of expensive to do things at festivals and things but when am I ever going to make a chimney cake again? And when it's that fresh, it's amazing. So that was really cool to do. That was my goal as well as I ate some food. Here's the pictures of that. That was a lot of pork. They love pork here. And that was really, really good. Uh, I was going then to go to another festival that Nick invited us to because it was folk dancing again. But I was getting cold and I just been, been pushing it and I didn't quite do everything at the festival chimney cake festival I wanted to do so I came back and was like here to the apartment and was like I don't sorry change your plan I don't want to go and everyone kind of had done that to him but he went and he said uh there was only a few things and there was no dancing so it's like good thing I did not because it was like 45 minutes away good thing I did not head all the way down to district 12 and for nothing so I ended up staying here, watched How to Be Single, and then Avalon High from the Disney Channel. <laughs> and that was relaxing. Sunday, woke up, went to church. Our pastor is out of town on a presbytery meeting thing. So we had a fill-in who attends the church. I, I've talked to him. He's from upstate New York originally and did not realize he was a pastor. Like, he's a reverend doctor, so... That was cool, good church service, talked, Logan brought his cousin, who's a math teacher, in Austria, so that was kind of cool to have a conversation with her. Came back, I was going to go to those dance classes this weekend, I was going to go to one right after church, but when that, that Sunday, Sunday morning, I looked at it, and they had changed it from 1 o'clock to 12 o'clock, and it's like, well, I'm still in church at 12 o'clock. So then I met up with Ashley, and we went and did the Lindy Hop class, which was supposed to be a continuation of the day before, but I don't know if we were all new or something. It didn't feel like a continuation at all. So that was a lot of fun. And this was definitely music that my grandparents listened to. <laughs> I think it's an American dance from the impression I got. So it's really funny that we learned this American dance in Hungary in Hungarian. The class was in Hungarian, except for the teachers talked some English. And as females, it's really easy because we just follow the male's lead. <laughs> And so that helped us both learn how to follow better because we're both awful at that. And so I had lots of fun with her because we went together and then we went back to the Chimney Cake Festival because she wanted to get some of those potato chips that I've talked about before. And there was something else I wanted to get and I got, oh here's a picture. Yeah, it's the, they, they made like a donut. So unlike the other ones where I burned it, where I made it over coals, they're tinier and they deep fried them like a donut. And then they filled it with I got vanilla cream and whipped cream, and the vanilla cream was just kind of like vanilla pudding. So it was really, really good. Yeah, and then I came back and I talked to my mother for hours and hours and hours. <laughs> Which was great. I'm happy we caught up and there's still more to do. She was helping me with my voting and we didn't actually even finish, so still have to finish that. Yeah, and then yesterday was Monday. Not a whole lot happened, just regular class. Nick taught yesterday and he taught a lesson that I taught in uh, Methods of Teaching Mathematics last spring. I gave it to him because this will force me to get out of my shell and create a new lesson for this class. So, yeah. And then today has been a very good class and tomorrow, tonight's salsa. I did go to the box donut, or the box is what it's called, and got some white hot chocolate which when I was sitting in class all I kept thinking was like, I could really go for some white hot chocolate and I like I didn't even realize it was gonna be an option because she asked me do you want brown or white and I was like white and it was white I was so happy so and I'm trying to find hot chocolate to make here at home but I can't find it anywhere I can find plenty of coffee and tea but I can't find homemade hot chocolate mixed stuff so but that won't be a big deal it's just been really rainy and definitely it definitely turned cold last week not a bad cold but it's not anywhere near what we were having there so it's good it's very very good so yeah, um, I'm doing really well. I have been having a great time, but a little bit of stress. Midterms are coming up next week, so 
we'll see how much I vlog. Uh, I definitely have something exciting happening on Friday. I'll let you know then. It's gonna be pretty new. So hopefully, hopefully it works out. Otherwise, I think I have Bible study tomorrow. We're doing Moses. We did Moses last week. We're doing Moses again this week. And Thursday will be classes. Saturday, I have school because when I have Halloween off, we, and I guess this is a Hungarian thing because November 1st you get off government wise. And whenever there is a Tuesday or a Thursday off, they give you the Monday and the Friday off by switching it with a Saturday. So to get that Monday off, I have to go in on a Saturday, and that's the Saturday. And that's it. So yeah, thanks for staying tuned to my adventure.